What is up, everybody? What's up, internet? Justin Zane here, your WWE 2K16 World Heavyweight Champion and Worms Armageddon Heavyweight Champion and WWE 2K16 Mr. Money in the Bank along with said Meister, aka Bandana Bob. And we're here to give our review and reactions to what has been an explosive Money in the Bank pay-per-view for Money in the Bank 2016. I mean, this was uh, rumored to be the best Money in Bank in history. And um, I don't know. What do you think? Did it live up to that hype, bro? <laughs> it lived up to the hype. In more ways than I can count. That's but, true, man. I mean, it was a hell of a fucking badass pay-per-view, for sure. Oh, my God. It all began with the pre-show matches, which started off with Team Golden Truth going up against Bree Zongo. And thanks to a bit of a uncalled-for prank uh, uh, from Monday Night Raw... Bree Zongo had like major bad sunburn to give the Golden Truth an advantage in order to get the win over Bree Zongo at Money in the Bank. They looked like freaking Freddy Krueger. That's how bad they were burnt. Yeah, they were like burnt, peeling all over. Oh my god. I mean, I mean, I would see how Golden Truth could have stooped that low to get a win. But he finally won one, though, at least. Yeah. Even though, you know. I it took know. some dirty tactics of. Yeah, because sunburn, you know, that could cause cancer, man. I, I know. It, they put Brizongo's life in danger. I, I know. It's, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, what's the nerve of those two? But anyway, but anyway, on to the other tag team match that took place on the uh, kickoff show, which is the Lucha Dragons against. The Dudley Boys, and and and, uh, and it was a pretty back and forth match, but but after a Salido del Sol and a Dragon bom bomb to Bubba Ray Dudley, the Lucha Dragons came away with the win. Good for them. Now let's on let's get on to the actual show here. This is what it's all about. Yes, Money in the Bank. 2016, the best money in the bank in history, and it started out with a really, really sweet match. Yeah. Yes, it did. And the match it started with, I believe, was the fatal four-way match for the WWE Tag Team titles between the New Day, Enzo Amore and Big Cass, the Vogue Villains, and Luke Gallus and Carl Anderson, the club. Yeah, man, I mean, I I haven't really ever seen a Fatal 4-Way tag team match for the belts before. I always thought Fatal 4-Way tag matches were kind of weird because only two uh, legal people are, you know, or only two men are legal like in a normal match. Yeah. But I don't know, man, it was a pretty cool match. We saw a lot of huge moves. Um, the ending sequence, you, you couldn't tell who was going to win. And then just, <laughs> it was so awesome to see that the New Day was able to retain their belts in the Fatal 4-Way. And they won it clean, too. They didn't even have to use the numbers game. It, they overcame the odds, even though the odds were stacked against them. And, your, and the New Day continued their historic reign and hoping to become... The new top longest reigning tag team champions in history. I think they will, man. The New Day has just been so dominant, man. And they've got to make it maybe like one more month. And they're, they got it. Yeah, they won the titles back last year at SummerSlam, which means if they make it through SummerSlam this year as tag team champions, then they have been tag team champions for a whole year. And that's going to break the record of Paul 
London and Brian Kendrick. Yeah. But anyway, moving on to the next match that took place during the during the show was Aaron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. A match that was scheduled to be on the kickoff show, but they ran out of time. So so they moved it to the main main show. And I gotta say, that match pretty much lived up to what it, all the other Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin matches they've been in. It was a very stiff and physical match. Um, the guys, you can obviously tell they really fucking hate each other's guts. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I just don't think. I think that Baron Corbin's got Dolph Ziggler's number, man. Baron Corbin has been, you know, pretty much in this rivalry, made to look like he's way stronger than Dolph, Dolph Ziggler, I think. Yeah, and pretty much Baron Corbin pr- proved that he truly is better than Dolph Ziggler. After an end of di- after the end of days, Dolph Ziggler had no choice but to stay down for the three count, therefore solidifying Baron Corbin. And Dolph Ziggler's rivalry to an end with Baron Corbin coming out on top. Yeah, I think Baron Corbin is going to be like a huge uh, main event superstar in the future, man. Like He's been on a massive roll ever, ever since he won the uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania. Well, the guy's a monster. No kidding. Now let's move on to the next match, which was, I believe... John Cena versus AJ Styles? Yeah. John Cena versus AJ Styles. Oh, well, only if we're skipping the Divas Tag Team. Oh, yeah, right, right. That had the crappy ending. Yeah, we'll tell about that in a minute, but first let's just talk about Cena and AJ Styles. Which also had a crappy ending, but awesome match. I oh. mean, the match was really, really good. Yeah, the beginning of the match, everybody was hyped. Chanting the same chant that they, the fans were chanting the same chant they chanted right before AJ Styles turned heel. Let's go, Cena, AJ Styles. Yeah. I mean, the whole match went back and forth, and it was everything a dream match could ever be. But near the end, well, it just got thrown all away. I mean, AJ Styles kicks out of the AA. And then Cena kicks out of Styles Clash. Right. And then Cena puts him up for another AA, but Cena knocks him to the referee, which uh, takes him temporarily out of the equation long enough for uh, AJ Styles' friends, the club, to come down and do the magic killer on John Cena and put AJ Styles right on top of John Cena for the pin. It was a very disappointing ending to a very awesome match. A match, um, the, a match that could have lived <laughs> up to dream match st- status as it was supposed to if those stupid club idiots hadn't ruined it. Well, I feel like the match itself still lived up to that uh, high caliber match. It was a really good match, but the ending was a little bit unsatisfying. But I still think it was a great match. Like... And the ending is, it is what it is, man. That shit happens sometimes. Especially when you have a heel faction like the club. And that's what the club is becoming now. Is like the new heel faction in WWE. Which is an important spot to have. Because heel factions are cool sometimes. Like with the NWO and DX. And uh, not the League of Nations. But uh, the Nexus, they were pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, I think that this rivalry between AJ Styles and John Cena is just getting started. And you know what, man? I- I'm looking forward to lots more of these matches between these two on Raw, uh, maybe even on SmackDown. Who knows, man? Uh, yeah. The dudes, they put on a fucking really good match. I'm usually not that big a fan of John Cena's matches, but this one in particular was like really good. All the way up till the end, of course. Yeah. But anyway, m- moving on to the women's tag team match we were just talking about earlier between Becky Lynch and Natalia going up against Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Yeah, I mean, as we predicted, Charlotte and Dana Brooke uh, won this one. They didn't even go that dirty to win it. I mean, there was like one point where 
Natalia had the sharpshooter on Charlotte. And Dana Brooke was pulling Natalia's hair to try to get <laughs> to break the submission hold. Yeah, that 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 then then the Natalia or Becky Lynch collided together. Like I think Dana Brooke pushed Natalia into Becky Lynch, or Becky Lynch pushed or uh, Dana Brooke pushed Becky Lynch and Natalia and then after all that, Charlotte took advantage and went for natural selection to put away Natalia for the three count. Yeah, but I mean what really happened that was a shocking event afterwards was Natalia uh, turned on Becky Lynch and beat the ever living snot out of her, like ground and pounded her hard. And uh, I really didn't understand why Natalia did that. And it confused me, but, you know, that's kind of cool because plot twists like that are what keeps wrestling interesting. But um, well, it may keep wrestling industry interesting, but it kind of pretty much just spoils your t- spoils on what how you're representing your family. I mean, to me, after Natalia did that, I'm, I'm just thinking the Hart family's dead now. Oh, well, I don't know, man. Um, you know, Natalia is the last of the Hart family to be on the main roster with Tyson Kidd being out. Um, but, you know, Hart's become heel sometimes. Yeah. It's that big of a deal. I mean, I don't know if she's turning heel or not, but one thing is for sure that Becky Lynch and Natalia's little... Um, Partnership has now come to an end. Honestly, Becky, why stop trying to be friends with people in the WWE? It has not worked out for you. You need to just become a lone wolf and focus on your shit and stop trying to be friends. Because next thing you know, like you'll be trying to be friends with Sasha Banks and she's just gonna turn on you. You need to fucking learn to like just operate on your own, man. And pretty much to tell you, if you're gonna stab your partners or best friends in the back, then we really don't need you in WWE. You can just go back and take care of uh, Bret Hart and what, whatever, and just li- live for your family. Care for Tyson Kid Kid for once. But anyway, now let's move on to the big match, big matches that have been. But actually, first, let's go on ahead and move on to the uh, other match that was supposed to take place on the uh, kickoff show. Which is Sheamus and Apollo Crews. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sheamus and Apollo Crews. These guys are just starting out their rivalry. I think this is the first match they had, right? Yeah, first match they had together. And first match Apollo Crews has in the WWE pay-per-view. Yeah, I think this was a good um, match to really start off this rivalry. I'm sure we'll be seeing more matches from these guys coming down the line. Um you know, they looked very evenly matched, and even the ending was, like, really close. You yeah. know, like... Um, Shane is hitting a super, like, white cross, I think it, it was. It was white noise from white, the yeah, uh, white. second rope, and then... Apollo Crews kicks out, then Shane is complaining at the referee saying that was supposed to be three. Then Apollo Crews grabs Shane's arms into a crucifix and rolls him up for the three count. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just barely, man. Just barely, because Sheamus kicked out like right after that third hit, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Be looking forward to seeing more from these guys. Uh, I, I think you know, I'm a big Sheamus fan for sure, and uh, Apollo Cruz was always one of my faves. Um, you know, when he was in NXT. That is not your. Uh, I know. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway. actually, that is his. That's his cup from the other day. No, I'm talking about what you need. My drink. Oh, oh, you're trying. Oh, oh, this is your drink. Yeah, I got you. This is your drink. I'm gonna put it backwards, and I'm gonna take this one over here. <laughs> Say hello to everybody. Hi guys. I know you guys are talking about the uh, what's called Money in the Bank pay per view. Money in the Bank. So who that- won that? Who won the ladder match? Well, we, oh, were just, we were just, we were just about getting to get into, into that. We were just getting into that. I mean, what a epic Money in the Bank ladder match we just saw. And Bandana, I know you love a good ladder match. Yeah, I do love me a good ladder match. My favorite kind of like special stipulation in a match is putting a ladder in there. It just breeds for all types of fucking mayhem and destruction. And 
Oh, and the shenanigans. Yes, the shenanigans <laughs> run rampant. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I was really looking to Chris Jericho to win this one. And, and, and it was a back and forth match through the whole thing. I mean, we've seen cross arm breakers through ladders. We, I mean, we've seen a spike. Spike Dirty D from Dean Am- Dean Ambrose, Code Breakers, Cesaro Swings, everything you could see see from these from the from all the guys that were in that match. I got to give a shout out to Alberto Del Rio in this match. Like he was really showing that he wanted to win that Money in the Bank, man, because he was kicking the shit out of a lot of people, and I feel like he came really close to winning it. Yep, and being the second guy, second guy to ever win two Money in the Bank ladder matches, but he, he nearly he, he even nearly took Cesaro's arm out of socket after lunch. What? Alberto Del Rio didn't win it, did he? No, he didn't. But who did win it was Mr. Justin's prediction. Yes, my. Pr- my prediction somehow became right, and ladies and gentlemen, Dean Ambrose became Mr. Money in the Bank at the end of that ladder match. <laughs> Show did. And, yep, but that wouldn't be the last we seen of Dean Ambrose during that night, because now we move on to the main event, which is Roman Reigns. Oh, also Rusev beat the hell out of Titus O'Neil. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, just putting that out there. But that wasn't important because we knew that was going to happen. The main motherfucking event. Roman Reigns, the guy, yeah. against the man, Seth Rollins, for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. It was a fucking really good match, dude. There were some really crazy spots in there. My favorite was when uh, Roman Reigns went for the spear and Seth Rollins like caught it and turned it into a pedigree midair. Mid, mid spear into a pedigree. That yeah, was amazing. That was dope. Um, yeah, man. I mean, like the match was really good uh, for the like entire first half of the match. I felt like. Roman Reigns was really making Seth Rollins look weak. And I had never seen Seth Rollins as a singles competitor. You know, like, during the time when the Shield was broken up and Seth Rollins was on his own, um, I wasn't Along watching with the authority. WWE at Along the time. with the authority. Yeah. So, what? I mean, I didn't really know what to expect. But, I mean, the guy turned out to be, like, the legit deal. Him and Roman had a hell of a good match. Uh, he definitely... It was like one big, huge move after another at one point, man. Yeah, but but then Seth Rollins manages to turn it around at, because right before the end of the match, Roman Reigns went outside after Seth Rollins and was about to hit Seth Rollins with a spear, but Seth Rollins dodged out of the way and Roman Reigns went flying into the barricade. Ow. Yeah, he went for the huge spear into the barricade. And missed it, and then as soon as he got back in the ring, I believe there was another referee bump involving a spear or something, and then Roman Reigns goes for the pin, but the ref didn't fucking get it uh, in time, so Seth Rollins kicks out, stands up, hits Roman Reigns with a couple of more pedigrees, Yeah, the the pedigree from mid-spear, and then a second pedigree, which would put that big Samoan freakazoid egotistic moron down, and Seth Rollins would be the, would become a two-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion for about three minutes. Yeah, or or so we thought. Then, yep, Dean Ambrose, but as Seth Rollins would celebrate, Dean Ambrose's music hits. We thought Dean Ambrose was gonna come right down, rushing down to the stage to where Seth Rollins would be prepared oh, would be prepared for him. But no, Seth Rollins uh, was attacked from behind by Dean Ambrose when Dean Ambrose hit him in the head with his money in the bank briefcase. Knocking out <laughs> knocking out Seth Rollins. Then D. Ambrose hands the Money in the Bank contract to the referee saying he wants to cash in. Then, after Seth Rollins got back on his feet and Dean Ambrose had him in position for the dirty deeds, the bell rang. 
Then Dean Ambrose immediately after the bell rang hit dirty deeds. Covered Seth Rollins. One, two, three. Dean Ambrose is the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion and therefore making history but with all three members of the Shield officially becoming world champions. And also making history as having the shortest time that he held the money in the bank briefcase before cashing it in. Less than one hour. Beating Kane, beating Kane's record, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. No, nah, there's been matches that have been shorter. Yeah. Like at WrestleMania when the Rock beat Eric Rowan like six seconds. Yeah. So it wouldn't be considered the shortest match yet? No. No. Okay. But anyway, guys. That was Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank. What an epic pay per view. And we hope to get another good epic pay per view out of Battleground. But knowing that's going to take place after the WWE brand split, who knows what we're going to expect at. Battleground on July 24th. Who else? You guys are going to have to tune in to find out. As for now, I'm Justin Zane along with Bill Amuse and Bandana Bob, a.k.a. Sid Meister, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>